Welcome to Fresh Outlook. I'm Frank Cipolla. Lots happening this week, including, of course, the unfortunate terrorist attacks in Brussels that killed 31 people, injured almost 300. Europe seemingly the focus now of ISIS planned or inspired terrorism. To discuss this latest terrorist attack and how future attacks can be prevented, we welcome media professor at Western Connecticut State University, Jackie Guzda, and also Benedict Beckold. He's the author of several books and an expert in Greek and European culture. Welcome, both of you. Let's discuss the attacks first of all. They're happening with more frequency, unfortunately, in Europe. Does that say anything with regard to terrorism in general? Well, terrorists have better access to Europe, and we are separated by an ocean away. So it's harder to get over here, no matter what the Republicans are saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. And as we know, there's a big migrant crisis right. over in Europe right now. And the other thing is that you've got people who grew up as migrants in this, these big cities in Europe, and they are as disenfranchised as you, they can possibly be. Now, I wonder why that is. You're an expert in European affairs, and you see this all the time. The, the, the migrants are being blamed for a lot of this. But even before that, we had attacks in Paris. Uh, are they segregated? Are these Islamic groups segregated from the, from the general populace? They often are quite segregated. Um, and, and why is that? Well, here in the United States, we tend to think of integration as successful because our country has been quite successful, uh, historically so, in integrating immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. And um, so we are sometimes blinded to the fact that integration in Europe is often an absolute disaster and with whole enclaves of almost many states um, developing in cities where, um, where the uh, rule of law of the main of the larger country doesn't apply and mm -hmm. where um, radical uh, preachers and so on are able to gain a foothold and um, whole areas where um, Jewish communities are destroyed and or driven away and they move and um, and so we we are often blinded to the fact that uh, Islamic radicalization is a real problem. Well uh, putting the migrant situation aside the most recent yeah. events there was it better before we had the European Union or is it better or worse now? Well, you know, I can tell you a story to back up what Benedict's saying. Mm -hmm. It made no sense to me. I would watch shows like this. I would read the news. And I would see that these young people were disenfranchised. But it didn't make sense to me until I had a student. Mm -hmm. He was very, very dark-skinned. Right. His parents were from Africa. Right. But he grew up in Paris. He spoke French. And he thought the president was a racist. And I was like, why are you so against the president? The president of France. Of France. Why are you so against this country that you grew up in? Right. And he said, look, I'm not accepted there. I was born in Paris. This is my home. Mm -hmm. But in my home, I'm not allowed to have any kind of job that I want. People look at where I'm from. They won't hire me. They won't let me mix in with their crowd. And I could see, when I talked to that young man, mm -hmm. how he would try to find something better, some place that accepted him. Now, you've uh, traveled probably through Europe extensively. If that is true, is, is that the main problem right there, that they are segregated for the um, most part? There are two problems, I think, um, that contribute to it. One is, as we've been saying, the segregation, the fact that European populations are autochthonous, which we are not, we're a country of immigrants, whereas to be French, um, you essentially have to be from France. Right. Um, and then same goes for a lot of other European countries. Um, so that segregation obviously um, gives an opportunity for, um, for radical um, preachers and so on to come in, young disillusioned youth. However, the other part of the problem, which is not always politically correct to point out, is that there is uh, a militant strain which is not, unfortunately, a, uh, a tiny little fringe right. like we like to pretend, but which is, in fact, one of the mainstream interpretations, unfortunately, of Islam, um, which is that um, the entire world should eventually become Islamic mm -hmm. and, that, um, and that holy war, if necessary, um, the word jihad is banded about a bit irresponsibly. It really means exertion in the name of religion, but holy war is waged to accomplish that, whereas the typical uh, comparison being Christianity, right. they took, they needed well over a millennium to develop a notion of holy war, it was mainly Thomas Aquinas, um, whereas the notion of holy war has been present in Islam from the beginning, and if you are suffering disillusionment and segregation, then it's particularly easy within Islam to latch on to those, uh, to those notions. All right, joining us on the panel is Matty Khan as well. He's the president and CEO of cybersecurity firm Infotech Solutions. We're discussing the situation with regard to Brussels. Uh, the internet has made it, um, I'm sure, a bit easier for them to communicate and stay under the radar, hasn't it? 
the internet provided a form of communication mm -hmm. and given the um, what we've all faced right now, I'm familiar with Apple and the confrontation with the FBI, um, it's a form of communication that is somewhat protected. Right. And it's, uh, there's always a paradox that the people that are trying to hurt us, trying to hurt the free world and the freedom we, we provi provide, are enjoying that freedom and that protection in order to conduct their actions against us. Mm -hmm. And that is really the answer. It has helped in the current status. It will help as long as something doesn't change though it does look that something is about to change. So. Are the countries in Europe prepared to fight this sort of terrorism on the cybersecurity level, or are they not? I, I think, you know, <laughs> I'm not a U European expert, but I think uh, I was born in Europe, but uh, I think Europe has a problem getting up to grip with the idea of that they have a situation of a war at hand. Why do you say that? Uh, because the reaction is slow. I mean, we had the bombing in Spain, what now, four or five years ago in the train? Have you seen any reaction? We see these things happen and everybody goes, what happened? How did it come about? And yet you have nations like ours, or you take a country like Israel, who are not surprised at all. They know this is coming. They're much more in tune with some of the philosophies that you brought up, which I agree 100% with, by the way. Uh, these people are in a state of war. We still think that we're going to give them a democracy, freedom fries or whatever, they have a different state of mind. For them, we are the evil, we are the enemy. Not all of them, I agree with you, not all. And there's a, in every group, there's extremists. Right. But they are very successful in the ways. You know, they say terrorism has not succeeded. We will not bow to terrorism. Really? Have we not bowed to terrorism? We've changed our entire way of living. I have noticed as well that these events, when they happen, and they happen, unfortunately, with more frequency, really don't rattle the world markets that much anymore. It's almost as if it's baked in or understood that they're going to happen now and again. Would you agree, Jackie? Well, perhaps not the markets, but it has changed our way of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't want to go from the United States over to Europe now to travel. Right. Uh, people don't want to go to Israel now. You can go to Israel now for $500 round trip. So people do change their way of life. Overall, do we, though? I think we're going to keep moving on and keep living our lives. All right, Benedict, respond, please, to Maddie, who says that Europe has been slow to respond to this. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think part of the reason is that the uh, European intelligence, I mean, that's the case also to some extent here, but not as much, right. um, is that they simply refuse to recognize what the problem is. They, they're suffering from a sort of oikophobia, which is the opposite of xenophobia when you detest your own civilization. Right. Um, which makes them insist um, in the face of all evidence uh, that this are just very isolated extremists and that uh, the culture as a whole, which is brought into Europe from certain parts of the world, is anti-European and anti-democratic. Um, there are, if you speak to regular Europeans in the street, more of them actually would probably agree right. uh, with me on that, um, but they're not the ones who write in the papers or who uh, sit on talk shows. All right, now we're going to see President Obama's reaction in just a moment. Before we do, is it the internet, is, is, this is the cyber world making it easier and easier for these, uh, these terrorists to pull this off? But of course. No, Will I don't it get think easier? It makes it very easy, and we're just dealing with the regular internet. I'm not even talking about the black internet, which is a different. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the black internet is a. a you mean the, the dark, dark, web. dark internet. The dark, the dark web. web, which you guys call, we call the dark internet. Uh, that's a completely different world. Uh, on Tor, you can do a lot of things. The browser on the, on the dark internet, you can do things, and horrible crimes are done on Tor right. just by subscribing to it. Mm -hmm. and the co in the current format, and I'm not suggesting the format to change, but that's the debate. That's uh, supposedly the. We have a discussion about the privacy versus security, and the question is should we even have such a discussion? We should not have the discussion. Ooh, we should not have we a should discussion. We should not have the discussion. Because we don't need that discussion. Why it, do you say that? I believe that this is an issue that's been politicized. I think it gives great, um, promotes agendas, but really this can be done quietly. A lot of stuff is done behind the scene that we don't know about. This whole Apple thing could have done quietly behind the scene. The solution that now is working for Apple is not working out well for well, Tim we're Cook. Well, we're going to discuss yeah. Apple in the next segment. But that's the... We're going to discuss that in just in, yeah. in the next segment. But for now, let's take a look at President Obama's reaction. He was on uh, a visit to Argentina, I believe, at the time, and made this comment with regard to the attacks in Brussels. The thoughts and the prayers of the American people are with the people of Belgium. And we stand in solidarity with them in condemning these outrageous attacks against innocent people. We will do whatever is necessary to support our friend and ally Belgium in bringing to justice those who are responsible. And this is yet another reminder that the world must unite 
We must be together, regardless of nationality or race or faith, in fighting against the scourge of terrorism. We can and we will. All right, so let's discuss that aspect of it. Was that strong enough, Jackie? Yes. You think so? Absolutely. You know, they said that the problem with Belgium was not that there wasn't enough intelligence, mm -hmm. but it wasn't evaluated correctly. That these terrorists were kind of like below the top terrorists, and they were watching the guys that created more chatter than these people. And so, in a sense, there was too much information right. that the Belgians couldn't seep through and find out what was really going on. Well, on a, on a I mean, political I mean, I mean, right, one point, what you're defining is the difference between data and information. Mm -hmm. There was too much data there was not enough information. Information is what we derive from data. There's no question that we are collecting today a lot of data from drones, from source, from human information, wherever. Where the shortage is, is taking that data and converting it to information. That's right. What you're saying actually, they had the data. We know, we had the data here before 9-11. We didn't have the information. Information is the analysts, the people that take that data and convert it to information. And that's where we're, they're short. And if I may, one more comment. Yeah about the European thing, uh, one thought I had in mind, there's another aspect there, and I go a lot to Europe, I was born in a lot of family there. You gotta remember, Europe is becoming Muslim. Mm -hmm. Every third person in France is Muslim. These are democratic country. Right. While I definitely don't think the majority of Muslims are supporting terrorism, but the majority of Muslims are silent. You don't hear, uh, you don't hear denouncing the action. Mm -hmm. I think if we would hear about Americans committing terrible crimes, all of us as Americans would denounce it. They don't support it, but they all don't, also not so vocal on denouncing it and they are and the leaders in Europe feel it and they need their vote so the slow response has to do also with the fact that by all estimates in a hundred years from now Europe is all Muslim all right let's take uh, let's ask this question Benedict a lot of people it's political season here in the United States so yes. anything goes as you know mm -hmm. <laughs> but some of the people on the other side of the aisle said the president gave a very tepid speech uh, he continued his trip in Argentina right do the Europeans feel that? Do they, do they care about anything like that? He made a statement. It was almost a minute long. He was in solidarity, of course, with yeah. the folks there. Was that enough? Um, he engaged in the usual bromides of solidarity, which is fine. There's nothing especially wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for the head of state to express solidarity. But it's really only that. Um, to go back to the previous point, uh, we really need to identify part of what the problem is we can only encourage the uh, reform-minded Muslims who want to make their faith compatible with uh, Western-style liberal democracy if we recognize that there is a strong but, part but of... staying on the political uh, yeah. aspect of it as well, sure. and maybe Jackie you'll join in as well. W w was that enough, uh, a statement of solidarity? It seems to me that maybe the president can't do much from Argentina, number one. Number two, it's, it's really a European issue and an information and data issue. Uh, I don't know if the United States was assisting Brussels in gathering this information, who knows. But also these were guys who were part of a cell and were hell-bent on doing this. What's he supposed to do? I mean, if you look at New York City, and you can back me up on this, mm -hmm. New York City Police Department is an international police department. It's not as if we are not working together. Right. I thought that that trip to Cuba was very, very important. And that's why I wanted the president con to continue on in right. South America. There was literally not much he could have done if he came back here. Okay, if you were advising the folks overseas about trying to prevent these future attacks, the lone wolf, unfortunately, is always going to get through. But what would you recommend on the cybersecurity level? Well, the, the first thing is awareness. Awareness is the big, the big, big thing. I think we, we, we conducted here the campaign of see, see, see something, say something. That's very successful, see, say, see, see, see something, say something. Right. Because how much law enforcement do you have? You go to, a, to an airport, you go to a train station. How many law enforcement can you have if there's a package on the floor? But now we are in the mentality, which we were not 20 years ago here, that if we see a bag there, we say, who does this bag belong to? Because mm -hmm. then they're not always committing suicide bombing. Many times they prefer just leaving a bag and spare their own life. So see something, say something. The public must get in a state of mind that there is a war going on. Not all wars are going to be like World War II. I think Belgium is symbolic because World War II started in Belgium and ended in Belgium. So <laughs> I think there's something symbolic there. But uh, awareness is the biggest issue. Then increasing, on the point that you brought up, definitely increasing uh, the problem of the, the, the level and the funding for the analytical group that takes information and turns it, it takes data and turns it to information. We have warehouses of draws, vi videos, warehouses of testimonies and information that we know for a fact 
There's just not enough people to analyze it. So people come after the fact and say, oh, you know, they, they knew this existed, or they knew they, this group followed Muhammad up there right. and this. But people really don't read. Yes, they had individual cases of sub-subgroups doing some activities, but it never made it to the forefront. So, so streamlining information. The third thing is quality of technology. Uh, if you, a simple example I can give on a, on a surveillance tape, you don't want to watch the whole surveillance tape. Right. You want to watch surveillance tape, only that part is relevant, and that might be 2% of a surveillance tape. And there is technology, smart technology, to eliminate non-activities, to eliminate non-relevant information. So instead of having somebody watch a surveillance tape for 30 minutes, you watch it for two minutes. And there's a lot of technologies in, that's just one example, I can give you five, six. Well, we've run minutes. out of time, so we've got to leave it okay. there. Thank Maddie, you. thank you very much, Benedict as well, Jackie. When we come back, the tug of war, which you mentioned a moment ago, between Apple and the Justice Department, over who has the right to see what's in your smartphone. We'll be right back.